was uh, very moving to hear your presentations. The, um, the degree which you're, t which you're exploring the performance of a building um, is certainly the future. And um, to see buildings that have done it so successfully is, is really, uh, for me, a great experience. We're going to talk less about the performance of our building because we're dealing with a building of a very different scale. Uh, we're dealing with a building which, in 1994, when I started working on the project, um, was to be the world's tallest building. Uh, it was also to be 460 meters high, which seems a little bit uh, strange nowadays that the buildings are now almost uh, 1,000 meters. But the, the design of a building that was to be the world's tallest was something that was very important from a, a symbolic perspective. And I want to begin by talking a bit about this man. Uh, Mr. Minuro Mori was our, our visionary. Everybody who worked with him considered him to be a man who had at his heart the, the, the quality of life that could be possible in the modern city. And from our perspective, he was able to introduce and focused on introducing a juxtaposition of programmatic activities and everything that he designed. And here he's standing in front of a model of the Robungi Hills development in Tokyo, which we worked on with him. But he had an innate sense of how to combine things to bring in an extraordinary urban vitality. We have had the good fortune of working with three generations of the Mori family. My partner, Gene Cohn, uh, first met Mr. Mori's father, who was the founder of Mori Building, met him in Tokyo, had a meeting. Mr. Mori was dressed in traditional kimono. Gene presented an enthusiastic presentation. Uh, Mr. Mori listened to every word. When Gene had finished, he said to Mr. Cohn, he said, we've done reasonably well without you over the years. What, what is it that you can bring to us that will actually help us? And Gene, had told me that he felt very much like responding, well, Mr. Mori, it's really not what we can do for you, but what you can do for us that's important. And uh, <laughs> frankly, they've done a great deal. Uh, we also have now the pleasure of working with Hiro Mori, oh. <laughs> the third generation of the Mori family. Um, and all of this, what we present today, is very much a product of the collaboration and the vision of this man. The documented efficiency and sustainability of these buildings, of this building, is not one which we will focus on, but focus very much on the issue of the symbolic quality of this building, both within its community and as a world symbol, frankly, for an emerging uh, global economy, uh, which is that of China. Mr. Mori did believe, however, that to build sustainability, one needed to build with great efficiency. And that aspect of the design, which uh, Leslie Robertson, who is sitting out here now and was very important in being involved with, that is extraordinarily important from the perspective, from Mr. Moore's point of view and from our point of view as well, it's creating the maximum amount of enclosure with a minimum amount of external volume. 
And I think that one thing that this project that we show you has accomplished is a, an extraordinary great efficiency from that perspective. Secondly, from a symbolic perspective, Mr. Moy did not see the private investment as being a, a singular sense of symbolism for a building. He believed that the building should in fact invite the sense of community participation. And in every major tall building that he did, he always introduced a component which brought the civic life into the building, which welcomed people from the community into the building so that they participated in, in a way that that participation became one of the key driving forces of the symbolism of the building. Just on a personal note, this is more valuable to me than it is to, is to uh, any of you, but uh, at the time I was starting work on this building, I was designing a, a, a door handle. And I tried to combine the geometry of uh, the pure ge geometry of a cylinder with the movement of the human hand and allow the resulting product then to be the dialogue between those two. Similarly, in finding a symbol that was legitimate for Chinese culture, these two artifacts, the square prism, which represented the earth and the sky symbol, which was a circular disk, between, became the two driving geometries and elements of the combination which formed the geometry of our building taking the square prism and intersecting the square prism with a, what one might co almost consider celestial arcs, enable then the generation of a building which roots itself out of the earth and becomes, as it emerges into the sky, an extraordinarily uh, delicate element. The building itself, of course, needed to re re resist tremendous wind forces. The presence of an aperture on the top of the building was ne absolutely necessary for us to be able to accomplish that fact. And that aperture was initially conceived by me in my naivete, cultural naivete, as being a moon gate, a circular aperture cut through the top of the building. And that aperture was intended to establish a relationship with the Oriel and Pearl TV tower, such that the cylindrical solid on the top of the TV tower and the void on the top of the Shanghai World Financial Center could have a reciprocity. That symbol, however, was greatly resisted when presented to the Chinese. Frankly, they felt it was raising the symbol of the Japanese flag above the city of Shanghai. In a, an emergency meeting with the deputy mayor of Shanghai, I introduced the concept of a, a bridge coming across the center of that aperture. And around that bridge, a, a type of f a geared Ferris wheel, which would allow the participation as one moved around the entire void. Well, that ultimately was not successful. There was then a hiatus of about five years during the Asian economic crisis where the building and the design and construction lay dormant. But all the piles had been driven. Les Robertson was brought onto the scene five years later. And at that particular point in time, Les's challenge, where the building expanded in its volume and expanded in its height, was asked to design a structure which was no heavier than the structure that had been designed for the previous building. And this was the elegance of his, uh, his proposal, which dealt with four major super columns and the refuge floors essentially suspend, suspending individual uh, uh, low bearing structures within it. In the base of the structure, the tower was surrounded by the semicircular enclosure and then penetrating walls, which 
were able to establish then major entrances into the building itself. Uh, the sectional characteristics of the building, speculate office building up for the great majority of it, the top of the building being hotel, and the very top of the building being, of course, this skywalk that ultimately was achieved. The transition th throughout all of the floor plates from this pure square at the base of the building to the line on the top of the building is one of my favorite, my favorite diagrams. And the efficiency of each one of these individual floors, from the efficiency for the office floor on the left to the hotel floor on the right, shows the justification of the transformational geometry that was made into the form of the building and the skywalk on the top of the structure. The building of originally, uh, as you see here, with the Jim Mile building next to it, uh, being uh, the symbol of Shanghai for a number of years. But of course, as uh, time has gone on, uh, the building has, over the years, uh, received uh, a third participant, which is uh, substantially taller than it. But still, to my perspective, its presence has still been uh, kept. The base of the building where the meets of the earth and roots it into the earth, none of which it rises to the sky. The entrances to the building penetrating through the volume itself. And the general sense of calm that the building tries to engender as a participant in the city. In Pudong at the town, there were 80 tall buildings, the lowest of which was 40 stories in height. An enormous visual cacophony was uh, the result. And the purpose and role of this building was to create an urban stabilizer, one which in fact created a building of a certain nobility and presence, yet at the same time was one which welcomed the activity of the city. And with that, let me introduce Mr. Hiro Mori, who is now the third generation we've had the great pleasure of working with the Mori building. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Oh, please take a seat. Hi, good, e good evening. Uh, first, I'll uh, show you a three-minute video about Shanghai World Financial Center. Shanghai World Financial Center is a symbol of Shanghai's rising influence and a symbol of Shanghai's accelerating growth. The SWFC is a cornerstone of Shanghai's development, economy, culture, and lifestyle. As the huge windows open to the sky, so does the mass information flowing in and out of this building, generating a powerful magnetism. And like a magnet, the SWFC shall function as a compass, guiding the way to a better future. The SWFC attracts professionals from all over the globe to interact and to create new possibilities that will shape the global future. Retailers here are partners in actualizing new concepts. The Park Hyatt Shanghai offers a level of comfort and service that transcends other hotels. 474 meters above Shanghai is one of the world's highest observation decks. But the real potential of any building is in the people who visit work and live here. Town management works as a coordinator to create a safe and special environment for all. There are always new surprises and new discoveries to be made at SWFC. From the exchanging of ideas, to an appreciation of art and music, to new adventures and old customs. The SWFC is a city in itself where everything you ever wanted and never expected can be found. We believe cities and nature can coexist. So for an hour every year, we turn off the lights.
Now is the time to sketch a new grand design for the city of Shanghai. We believe in the importance of bringing a long-range perspective to cityscape and building design. We must not be stuck in the present. We need proposals based on creative breakthroughs, discussion, and action. We must turn our attention to a future that traditional thinking and old methods could never produce. A future that can raise human potential to unprecedented heights. Now it's time to look to the future and to think how we want to shape the next strategy. Shanghai World Financial Center, a vertical garden city. From now, uh, I'll give you a brief summary of the project with our vision, development concept, and missions. Creating and developing cities. This is our corporate vision of city making, and we have always tried to achieve a city's endless possibilities. To realize this, we aim to build a compact city with super high-rise buildings and our development concept called Vertical Garden City. Under our Vertical Garden City concept, we built and have managed Shanghai World Financial Center, Observatory, Park Hyatt Hotel, Premium Office, Media Center, shops and restaurants. These are all in this mixed-use super high-rise building. If we say another way, Shanghai World Financial Center is city within a city. In our every project, we have maintained our three important missions. 24 hours, 365 days, strict security management system, reality-based uh, fire drill. They are just small example of our ac activities to keep safety and security. Second, green and environment. Beautiful flowers and gardens that you can see their different colors and features in every season. We cannot forget art and culture aspect. Picture in left is yoga for our tenants, employees, and local community in level 100 floor, 474 meter height above the ground. In the building, there are a lot of art and culture activities every day and every night. Under our missions, uh, Shanghai World Financial Center became global magnet with leading global business and finance, media, art and culture. That brings us new urban lifestyle. Over the last decade, together with KPF and the engineers, tenants and customers, other buildings, uh, land road, in the same area, and the government authorities, we have always tried to add value and contribute to the local community from the state standpoint of area management. In the result, we realize safe and comfortable pedestrian deck network between buildings, collaboration program, and campaign at city scale. With unique, very special and timeless building design, and with our partners and community support, Shanghai World Financial Center has stood out in the heart of the city as its landmark. 
we deeply thank all the related part parties to the project, especially Compass and Fox Associates, uh, Council of Tall Building and Urban Habitat, and all juries for the 10-year award. Thank you. Finally, I promise you today, we Shanghai Wide Financial Center will keep developing the city's endless possibilities to shape the next 10 years. By the way, uh, please allow me to inform you, all of you in this room, that tomorrow is Bill's 80th birthday. 80s, <laughs> incredible. <laughs> yeah, and he, he is still active. Bill, congratulations. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Thank you. Thank you.